What's going on guys? It's your boy John Liquidator coming back with another video. So it looked like Kaylin Clark and the Indiana Fever just broke another major record. Guys, for this one here, we gotta go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> secret that Kaylin Clark and the Indiana Fever has been taking over basketball as a whole. More fans is tuning in each and every week to watch this young lady play and as of right now, their team is rallying with the five game winning streak and I believe the streak is going to keep going. They are set to face Angel Reese and the Chicago Sky tomorrow in Chicago and that should be another legendary game. Now we know ever since Kaylin Clark has been in the league, she's been garnering millions of views all over networks just destroying records well it looked like she has destroyed another record it's being reported that Kaylin Clark and Indiana Fever break another massive WNBA record Kaylin Clark and the Indiana Fever have officially broken the NBA TV viewership record for a single matchup their Wednesday night game against the Washington Mystic peaked at 566,000 views averaging 460,000 viewers that counts for the NBA TV's largest audience in network history for the WNBA. The Fever has been the most viewed team in the league, with Kaitlyn Clark attracting major audiences during home games and away games. Speaking of away games, so allegedly the Atlanta Dream fans was yelling Kaitlyn Clark name in attendance last night, and that's crazy because that's a whole other city. Now the article goes on to say the rookie out of Iowa is currently fighting for the WNBA's Rookie of the Year award, leading all first year players with 16.3 points and 6.2 of six. Kaitlyn Clark is on fire right now, bro. I believe she's going to get that rookie of the year, but the article goes on to say Kaitlyn Clark popularity was also highlighted during the first wave of the WNBA All-Star Game voting earning the second most votes of any player in the league at just over 216,000. Asia Wilson is currently leading the votes right now, but a lot of critics and spectators has been saying Caitlin Clark could possibly pass her up in the most votes for a WNBA player for this All-Star game, and her teammate Aaliyah Boston ain't too far behind her either. Indiana started the season on a rough patch with the 2-9 record, but they since picked up major steam. The Fever are riding a four-game win streak, taking down the Atlanta Dream last night, 91-79, in their latest matchup and their first double-digit victory. During their historic NBA TV game against the Mystics, Indiana defeated Washington 88-81 in that game. The WNBA continues to grow, and much of the credit should go right back to Caitlin Clark and the Fever at all. They the hottest thing smoking right now. Moving on to another story, which I talked about this the other day, so people would still continue to say that Kayla Clark could participate in the Olympic 3x3 game with Cameron Brink and now Ryan Howard going down. They speculate that Kaitlyn Clark could be added to the team. And just like I told you guys the other day, Kaitlyn Clark, unfortunately, isn't eligible to play in the 3x3 Olympic game because she don't have 3x3 playing eligibility for her to participate in that Pacific game. But as of right now, guys, that's all the news that I got for you. As soon as some more news come out, you can count on me to let you know. And remember, Kayla Clark and the Indiana Fever will be in Chicago tomorrow to take on Angel Reese. Get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bills on. And, man, Caitlin Clark and the Fever is rallying right now. And until next time, shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out. Um, JP, please don't ask few things. Uh, like, not as many shots overall. And of those shots, more have like been from three-point line. I'm curious how much that's been an active thing that you've been working on and sort of adjusting to, you know, taking shots that um, you know, come most naturally. Yeah, I think uh, it's not something that was really ever talked about. I think just the flow of the game, I've gotten a better feel for the game over the course of the, 
you know, maybe the last 10 games, obviously when you first get in the league and just toss on the court with your new teammates, it's kind of hard to feel things out and they're trying to feel me out and I'm trying to, we're trying to learn how to play with one another and I think just our flow on offense has gotten a lot better and like you saw, like I think last game I took 12 shots, AB took 11, uh, Kelsey Mitchell took 11, so it was like very balanced overall, I think Liz took 8, Edub took 9, so like when you have that balance, it's a really hard matchup for the other team. Um, and I think especially because we're making shots at a very efficient rate too. Like the, we're not just chucking them up there and missing. Like we had been making shots at an efficient rate. So I think it's just finding the great shots, you know, pass up a good shot for a great shot. Um, I think I've been able to get my feet in the paint a little bit more and finish around the rim a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think it's just having that balance is going to be the best thing for myself and the best thing for this team. Last one, first row on the left. Hey, Kaylin, Ruffin, yeah. you know, from the three-point conversion. Mm -hmm. You talked about you had you've been having fun. It's been mm -hmm. enjoyable, but have you had that welcome to the WNBA moment? And if so, can you elaborate on? <laughs> Honestly, like I've I've been popped on a couple screens. I actually ruptured my eardrum when we were in New York on a on a tough screen. So if I had to pick one right now, it'd probably be that. Um, but like great screens, I just didn't hear them. So it's kind of my own fault. But yeah, I'd probably pick those.